Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel! And I am back with another Planet Zoo video after a short break. I will tell you guys more about why I was absent for so long in a second, but firstly let me tell you what we'll do in today's video. And as you probably know by the title and the thumbnail of this video, we will build a gorilla habitat for the Desert Adventure Park. And this makes me so so excited because it is the first time that I'm building for those guys on the channel and I really love how this habitat has turned out and I hope you guys will love it as well. If you've been following the series, you know that we are now working on a primate area for our African village in the Desert Adventure Park. And this will be basically the last uh, habitat uh, from this section, the last primate that we'll add. Uh, so we had uh, two or basically three uh, species of lemurs added. We had mandrills, we have chimps, and now it is time for the gorillas, like the like most precious animals in our African village they will be in the center of the village uh, the gorillas are critically endangered so uh, having them in a zoo means a lot actually uh, not many zoos have them uh, so if we have them in our zoo that really means a lot and we should build something very special for them uh, to keep them entertained and you know just for them to be happy and to meet their needs and I hope the gorillas will like their habitats in the end I most certainly love it so last time we've built a habitat for the chimpanzees uh, and by the way thank you guys for an amazing like response to this video you guys loved it you loved the idea uh, i had so many compliments about uh, you know that this looks like a uh, habitat from a real zoo. You love the grass idea, the patches of grass and the climbing structures and so on. So thank you so, so much. This really means a world to me that you love my habitats. And if you like the chimp, the previous habitat, I'm sure that you will like this one as well because they will be somehow familiar, uh, like similar. Uh, I will, of course, try to make it a bit unique, this one. Uh, but the idea is like very very similar uh, just as in real zoo like as you guys probably know by now I'm telling this in all of my videos uh, this zoo is inspired by my visit to the Dubai Safari Park uh, some things we do just uh, like there are in this park I go I use Google Maps for it for it and I try to copy some things uh, because I was so impressed by this zoo uh, and some things I just do out of my imagination and I'm not inspired by those, but those two habitats are definitely inspired by my visit and for, by my pictures and the things that I saw online. Uh, so yeah, in the real life they were also similar. Of course, the uh, gorilla one was bigger, uh, the indoor area was bigger, the outdoor area was also bigger. Uh, so that's why we'll make it a bit bigger <laughs> again uh, this time. As you saw at the beginning of this video, I basically copied the uh, building that we've built for the chimpanzees last time. Uh, so in case you haven't seen that video, I will of course put the link down in the description and on the screen uh, so you can go and check it out if you want to see how I've built this building. Uh, the building for the gorillas is a bit bigger so I made it like I extended it a bit but I did it off the camera because I thought that it is so like unnecessary for you guys to see it was just adjusting the walls and so on uh, I also did uh, the ceiling the glass ceiling like a window basically in the glass in the roof uh, so that the indoor area for the uh, gorillas has a bit more of the light natural light and I love how it is looking uh, when the sun is like shining inside of it uh, but the area for the guests where they go and can go inside of this like gorilla house is the like more or less uh, very similar uh, to the uh, chimp house uh, I will of course showcase it in the cinematics by the end of this video uh, so you guys can check it out uh, by yourself 
uh, later. So as I told you guys, the idea for this habitat is similar. That's why we did like a moat uh, around the habitat uh, as we are doing in a lot of habitats in here. Uh, it prevents the animals from escaping. I made sure that it is, you know, uh, wide enough for them not to be able to jump. Uh, also, I used the fence that we've created last time for the chimps. I just made it a bit uh, like taller uh, because I thought that, you know, the mm, gorillas are very like dangerous, strong animals and they need to be secured in their habitats, not to harm uh, anyone in case of any escapes. Uh, so I did like a taller fence. We again need to uh, imagine that it is like uh, electric, electricated, electrified. I don't know the exact word for it, but uh, that uh, you know there is some electricity that prevents the animals from climbing on this fence. We cannot redo it in Planet Zoo. That's why every time we need to use our imagination a bit. Right now, as you guys can see, I am building the climbing structures for uh, the gorillas. Uh, the inspiration for climbing structures came to me after watching several, you know, gorilla habitats uh, in the... Uh, on the Google Images, basically, uh, the climbing structures in this actual habitat in Dubai, they were not too interesting, so I went and found something nice online. Uh, my tip for the climbing structures for those bigger animals like gorillas and so on uh, is just to make them look a bit more uh, like solid, like, you know, the, those animals are actually heavy and really strong, so they could like rip apart a very like uh, thin uh, wooden uh, planks and things like that. So uh, I use this thin uh, plank uh, to make uh, like those platforms look a bit thicker, uh, so that it looks a bit more you know, stable, very like strong wooden structure that would. Uh, you know, withstand the uh, weight, but also the ranging gorilla or, uh, you know, them jumping, being fast and, you know, uh, things like that. Uh, so I paid attention to that, that those, uh, you know, climbing frames looks, look very, very like solid. And uh, I think that it is important because, you know, looking at those huge animals on a very, very small wooden planks on or I don't know, beams like those smaller ones. It looks a bit weird. Uh, that's why I made sure to use all of the like thick ones and try to make them look even thicker. I use this, use here my new favorite thing, uh, like the hinges uh, for the bolts or the screws. I think it looks so, so cool. Uh, and I use it now all of the time in my wooden builds in Planet Zoo. Yeah, this is really, really cool. Okay, so while we are working on those climbing structures, let me tell you guys a quick story about why I was absent for so long. Uh, this absence wasn't planned at all. It was because of a little accident that happened to me. Some of you may actually seen this on my uh, social media or here on YouTube uh, where I posted a, a photo on my community tab. Uh, I unfortunately injured my finger pretty badly uh, so I couldn't use uh, the keyboard the way that I wanted uh, like you know you have those hotkeys those shortcuts uh, in the planet zoo and without your pointing finger I always use you know my right uh, thing uh, hand to operate the mouse and my left hand to operate the keyboard and a pointing finger is actually a bit, you use it a lot <laughs> while playing this game and basically by when using uh, a keyboard uh, and I actually injured it so bad that half of my hand, hand was hurting so uh, I couldn't use it as well as I, I was basically using only my like the smallest finger and the ne one next to it. I don't know their names in the uh, in English, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, playing like this was hard. I couldn't do it. And that's why I decided to take a break for my finger to heal. And let me give you guys a tip uh, and explain a bit how what I did to my finger. I won't go into details because 
I know that some of you may be a bit, you know, sensitive or, or vulnerable to those, uh, you know, very uh, graphic stories and stuff like that. But basically, uh, when you throw away your trash and you have a trash bag, make sure that if you are throwing it away, there are no sharp objects inside. Uh, because what I did, uh, I live in an apartment building, uh, there are a lot of neighbors in he here and we have one uh, like a common uh, you know, place where we throw away our trash into this huge container and after you know a week uh, a lot of those trash bags like are mm, collected simply in this uh, container. Uh, so after a week there's a huge pile of the trash waiting for a garbage truck to arrive to collect them. And uh, if you encounter that day uh, just before the garbage truck arrival, you uh, like encounter this huge pyramid, like a pile of trash in the this container. And what you need to do is, you know, throw your uh, garbage bag on the top of it <laughs> and make sure it stays on the top. Uh, so I threw mine because it was so full that I had to do like a huge throw and I threw mine on the top of it but unfortunately I didn't do the best job and it started to fall down of this you know huge pyramid of trash and what I did I just like grabbed it mid-air by with my hand and while grabbing it I my finger encountered a shaving razor that was in the trash bag and you know, all the impact of it falling down and this uh, razor hitting my finger, it was bad, <laughs> let me just tell you. Uh, so yeah, I needed some time to heal. Uh, sorry for a very graphic, it was graphic, yeah, I know. Uh, sorry for that, if someone is sensitive to that stuff. And yeah, this is basically what happened to me, like a very unfortunate story. I had to go to the ER uh, to have it, you know, fixed basically and then my hand like my whole hand was like in pain for two days I couldn't do anything or for uh, with it because of the finger uh, and so yeah playing the game was basically hard but I am now back maybe it's not uh, perfect yet I hope that I won't have a huge scar we will see uh, but yeah, it is better now. I can use the finger more and more. I can actually press the keys, maybe not too hard, but I can. So I am going back on track and the new videos are coming. So I, want, I wanted to make it a short story and it was probably a very long story. Uh, so let me go, go back to the video for uh, a second and then I will tell you guys something more what happened. So, as you guys can see, I continue my work on the climbing structures in this habitat. Uh, as always, I try to push myself not to use like the uh, stuff that is actually meant for animals to climb, like those uh, poles that are in the enrichment section uh, for the animals. I use uh, the building pieces like wooden beams and uh, planks and stuff like that. Uh, and also a lot of ropes. Uh, I think that it is so important to use the ropes when it comes to animals like primates and so on because it looks so realistic. Like all, almost all of the habitats for those animals, they have some ropes for them. Uh, the gorillas, they don't like walk on them like in the game and chimpanzees and so on. Uh, they use the branchiation, you know, uh, like swinging on their uh, hands and stuff like that. We don't have that animation in the game, unfortunately. I hope that it will be introduced because without this animation we won't probably get gibbons in the game and I would love to have those guys because they are so cute and adorable with those very long uh, hands and this is also a very popular zoo animal so uh, I hope that one day we'll get this animation so you will be able to have uh, gibbons and to build some cool climbing structures for them as well. As you guys could see I also created some uh, things from the ropes like uh, hammocks or stuff like that. Uh, I saw this basically uh, in some habitats uh, from some zoo from the world. I'm not sure right now uh, where I saw it but uh, the gorillas 
actually slept in this like hammock of the uh, made of the rope so i thought that it is a cool thing so uh, i decided to build one for them uh, i actually used it two times in this habitat and i really really love it I also used those new uh, like climbable tree trunks and I connected them with long ropes. Uh, I really love uh, you know uh, using those two meter long uh, ropes and connecting them together in a very like slight angle so that uh, they look like they hang a bit but they still uh, like are not totally loose they uh, are a good grip for animals to climb and I also think that it looks so realistic and just like the ropes in the real life zoos they're also long and connect different you know, climbing structures trees and so on so I wanted to do it as well we used it a lot in the zoo in the lemur habitats and I loved it so I wanted to uh, sort of reuse it here as well. The other thing uh, when it comes to climbing that I wanted to reuse and you guys loved uh, are the like uh, dead trees that we uh, like created for the chimps uh from those new like branches that i made for climbing uh that were uh, you know added to the game with the euro pack so while i was building those climbing structures here in this habitat uh, i looked for you know different uh, kinds of things that the animals can climb on basically and i sort of rediscovered this uh, uh, australia log uh, that i loved to use in the past and i don't use it my now as often i don't really know why because i love the texture of texture of it and then I realized that the color of it is very like similar to the color of those new branches. And that's why I came up with those huge dead trees. I just, you know, stuck the branches that we did last time on top of those uh, logs. And I was so surprised and I loved how it is looking. Those are looking basically like dead trees. <laughs> I will be using them a lot and, you know, it looks so so realistic and so good in all of the you know primate habitats big cat habitats you have those huge uh, dead trees uh, in zoos the animals use them for climbing and it is so realistic to use them and i am so so happy with how it looks looking and as i told you guys i will be using it a lot i need to save them as blueprints and add to my future habitats because i am basically in love and you know you know i am so angry at myself that i didn't come up with this earlier because we'll be using them we would be using them basically much more often uh, but yeah the only thing the only thing with that guys is that I don't know why but the gorillas cannot climb those uh, those uh, logs those uh, Australian logs they have this uh, you know this, this tag that they are climbable but when I like added to this habitat even without all those uh you know branches and stuff like that just a simple log it is not like climbing but climbable for the gorillas it is not green at all so that's why the gorillas cannot climb on those trees the only ones that they can climb on are those you know uh fallen down ones that i added uh but the ones that are standing are not climbable for them and this is weird uh, I don't know, maybe it's a bug or something, but you know, this log is simply not climbable for them. I need to like test it with another animals because I was convinced that uh, they are actually climbable. I also think that I used them in Elm Hill City Zoo in some of the habitats and the animals were climbing it. So yeah, this is weird, but we cannot do anything about it. At least it looks super, super good. So after those trees, I started to add rocks. I wanted to have like a big uh, rock formation in the middle of this habitat uh, because this is simply what the original zoo had and the gorillas were able to climb on it. Here they also can do it. Uh, I added those, you know, like those ridges of the uh, like, I don't know, terrain, the, the rocks and stuff made of those, uh, you know, uh, logs, fake logs or something. I love how they are looking like you know the terrain just steps down uh, and I think it looks so so natural and uh, you know good in the end. Uh, 
After that, I will add a lot of trees here and I will also add, of course, a lot of foliage. Uh, I wanted to make this habitat a bit more lush than the one for the chimps. So there will be a bit more trees and a bit like similar foliage, but a bit different. I will use more of those uh, horse, ponytail uh, palm trees, I think. Uh, and other stuff. I will also use some bamboo bushes uh, and I think that in the end this habitat looks so so cool. I won't include all of the work on the foliage because I'm sure you guys will be able to figure out. I will just show you the, the like the uh, area the closest to the mold that I will do and the rest I will do basically off camera because you know, uh, those videos are already very long and I don't want to make them any, any longer. Another thing that I wanted to uh, tell you guys and to share with you my happiness, basically. Uh, and this is the, f the thing that Planet Zoo uh, like showcased my uh, rhino and elephant house on their social media, uh, like everywhere on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, if you follow them, you might have seen it. And I am so, so happy again that they showcase my work. I think it's the third time already. And yeah, it, every time it means so, so, so much to me uh, because I am basically a small creator. You know, there are people who uh, still play this game and have, you know, thousands and thousands of uh, subscribers and still they choose to showcase someone that doesn't have those numbers. So this is so cool and so, so, uh, you know, lovely. And I am over the moon as always when I saw uh, like the notification on my phone I was so like happy and you know this is amazing for me uh, that they like it that uh, they loved this creation of the rhino and elephant house because it was so much work for uh, for me uh, I spent so many hours building it so I really really appreciate this showcase I of course replied to them on Twitter, like thanking them for, you know, showcasing my work and they replied that uh, they are happy to and uh, they thanked me for always being such an uplifting part of the community and they love my work. So this was just, you know, again, amazing, uh, like to hear that they appreciate my work and and so yeah, this is basically like so heartwarming and such a lovely thing for me because I love this game so much. I love this whole community so much. I love you guys who watch my videos, who comment on them so much. And this has become like a so such a huge part of my life that yeah, I really appreciate them, uh, you know, saying that and seeing me and appreciating my work. So. Yeah, this is like, uh, like I feel validated. So <laughs> I just wanted to share with you guys uh, those news. And also another thing is that I, uh, like a second ago, told you guys that I am a small creator, but we are slowly like uh, getting closer to reaching 5,000 subscribers here on YouTube, which is another mind-blowing thing for me. Uh, it happened so, so fast. So thank you. Thank you guys again. Uh, if you are watching and you are not yet subscribed, please consider to do so if you want to me make me even more happy. Uh, all of you guys are so appreciated. And uh, yeah, if you would like to help me grow my channel. If you like my work, please uh, click, click that subscribe button. This would mean a world to me. And by the way, uh, when we will reach uh, 5,000 subscribers, uh, I don't want to promise anything, uh, but what I really want to do for a longer, longest time, like I think I am considering it for like half a year or something, uh, I would like to make some visual changes to the channel uh, and I feel like 5,000 subscribers is a perfect time to do so. Uh, so basically I would love to change my logo because it was like a five minute design in Canva that I did before uploading my first uh, YouTube video. Uh, also I would like to change the intro a bit, uh, 
I know some of you like it, but I think it might be a bit too long for uh, what I normally see here on YouTube and also some other small visual changes. Uh, so I hope that I will be able to do it before we reach 5000. That's why I don't want to promise anything, but I think that the logo for sure needs to be changed because uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. <laughs> I love the giraffe. I think the giraffe will stay uh, because I think that it became like my staple thing. Like Caesar creates is a giraffe. <laughs> Maybe I'm not. I'm not that tall. But uh, yeah, that is something that is my thing. A giraffe, I think. So I will stick to that. But uh, I don't know even why I put like uh, Caesar Creates, like uh, my name in the logo. Not many people do it. Like, like on YouTube, the logo is so tiny that you probably like cannot read it. <laughs> and it takes such a huge space in the side of this logo. And, you know, next to the logo, you have like a default, like the channel always is displayed on YouTube next to your logo. I mean, the name of the channel. So it is really pointless to put in your name <laughs> in the logo. And that's why I would love to change it. Uh, but yeah, I cannot promise you guys when it will happen. I will try to do everything uh, to uh, like have a new design for 5,000 subscribers. But it's it depends on a lot on you actually if you do it fast i will have a problem <laughs> if it will take a more uh, time i should be good but it will be actually very nice if you make me harry so <laughs> yeah don't hesitate to click the subscribe button if you haven't already uh the closer i will be to changing a bit my channel so yeah i really look forward to that because uh I am not a fan, as I told you guys, of my like a visual uh, thing on the channel. Uh, I did it when I didn't have any YouTube experience at all. I did it basically myself with zero uh, like graphic design experience or anything. So I am still like a bit proud of it, but I think it's time for a change. So as you guys can see, I finished the uh, work on the foliage. Uh, right now I was showing or I am showing you guys how to uh, hide a bit this forage box enrichment. Uh, if you don't want those ugly corners of it uh, to show, you can do it with terrain, some rocks and foliage and the animals will still be able to use it and the keeper will still be able to fill it. So that's really cool. Uh, so I added the foliage, I added a lot of rocks to this habitat uh, I did my new favorite thing, uh, which I came up with recently, which is uh, doing or your own like a huge like bush uh, out of those uh, Brazil nut saplings. I think this plant is called like this small uh, Brazil nut tree. And when you add a lot of them next to each other, they create this really cool looking uh, bush and this is what I'll be using a lot uh, from now on because I love the look of it. And right now I moved on to the inside uh, part of this habitat, it's like an indoor part. Uh, it is again a bit similar to the one that we did for the chimps. Uh, a bit different because it is bigger but still we have uh, like a water section and a lot of uh, you know rocks where the animals like gorillas can slip on jump on and do stuff like that there's a lot of enrichment items for them to come inside uh, i will uh, also add in here like those uh, fake trees like those huge logs just because i love the look of it uh, and at first i wanted to add the branches and some to them but then I realized how much I hate it because I still think that the branches for those uh, like fake trees are too thin for how huge the like the log is and it looks so so weird they should be like twice as thick because you don't have like this huge like tree and then very small like branches coming from it uh, like the branches that are close to the log or the trunk the tree trunk they're also very thin because they are coming out, like growing out of this very huge 
you know, uh, trunk. So it like they don't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> so I decided to uh, delete them because I think that uh, it looks more realistic without them. After that, I will also show you guys uh, a footage of uh, building the backstage stuff, uh, the backstage area for this uh, habitat. I will include here a keeper hat uh, because we don't have many of them in this area. And also uh, I will do like, I will start to do like the night quarters, like the stalls where the animals will spend the night. Uh, and uh, I will like begin the work on the, you know, the inside fence for it, because you guys love the fence for, from the uh, chimpanzee habitat. So I decided to show you guys a bit how I do it uh, in here, but I won't show the entire footage of building this, uh, you know, backstage area because it took so much time. And it's basically a very similar one to the one, to the one that we did for the mandrills and the chimps. So we can go and watch, for example, a, a mandrill video if you would like to see more about it uh, but yeah you'll of course be able to see uh, all of the backstage stuff and the things that I didn't show here uh, in the cinematics by the end of this video. When it comes to the plans for the Desert Adventure Park uh, I think that we'll have one more video uh, in this park uh, where I will actually build a cool building for the zoo. I'm really excited for the, this thing. Uh, and then I planned a tour to give you guys an update of everything that we've built. So far we are working for the zoo for I think almost a year uh, with you know breaks uh, because sometimes I focus more on the Elm Hill City Zoo but this zoo is so much more like cohesive I think and the areas around the habitats look so so much better than in the Elm Hill City Zoo that I really want to show you guys uh, the stuff that we all built already here uh, like um, like after uh, I will be done with uh, the building that I will build in the next episode we'll have basically half of the the African village uh, done for this park so I think that it is a perfect time to do the first tour and I am very very uh, happy to uh, you know show you guys around this park because I love it. Also a little update on the Elm Hill City Zoo. Uh, the Elm Hill City Zoo will be back soon. I am uh, right now working on a huge project that I told you guys about. I actually uh, had a problem <laughs> because I uh, started to build this one so many times already. Uh, I can't can decide where I want to have it and uh, you know where how it will look but I am going somewhere I know that I'm going in the right direction so the new video will should be probably out next week I hope so uh, and I hope you guys are as excited for my secret project as I am and I hope you guys will love it so stay tuned. We are getting closer to the end of this video and I still haven't uh, told you guys anything about the gorillas which makes me sad because I love the gorillas. I think that uh, first of all they are really uh, like underappreciated in this game. I feel like I don't see much love for the gorillas and I don't see many people's people building for them uh, like from the primates uh, I think you guys love the lemurs uh, the most and uh, the gorillas are kind of skipped sometimes uh, but I love building for them actually when I still didn't have my YouTube channel I only had uh, uh, Instagram account for my uh, parks in Pla in Planet Zoo. It was called Planet Zoo Maniac. Where uh, what an original title! <laughs> uh, I built a cool uh, like a gorilla uh, tropical habitat, and it was actually showcased uh, by Planet Zoo. Uh, so back then it was huge for me because you know I didn't have YouTube or anything, and they still like saw it and uh, uploaded it to their socials. So yeah, that was huge. So I have a very like good memories with uh, gorilla habitats in this game. But yeah, gorillas are critically endangered, which is so, so sad. They, uh, you know, their population decrease because of the habitat loss, because of the, because of the Ebola uh, disease that we uh, human can pass on them, which is very sad because they cannot cure themselves. They don't have any medicines for that. So, you know, they are doomed to die of the Ebola. 
For example, there was an Ebola outbreak uh, in one of the groups of the uh, gorillas that lived in Congo, in one of the parts of Congo. And in this population, there were uh, 377 uh, gorillas and only 40 of them survived the outbreak. So this is extremely sad because, you know, it is... And that only shows how uh, like vulnerable those animals are and uh, what we need to do to help them to preserve the species of those magnificent but also very dangerous strong uh, animals. Uh, there are actually four, 550 uh, western lowlands, lowland gorillas that live in zoos and the zoos try to breed them you know uh, to increase the population of them uh, like the Cincinnati Zoo actually leads uh, in the lowland gorilla births on the world uh, like among the uh, zoos on the world so uh, this is good news but the future for the gorillas mainly because of their habitat loss and the diseases doesn't look so bright. The fun fact is that the male gorilla is often called a silverback uh, and this is because the hair on the back and rump of the males uh, takes on a grey coloration and is also uh, losing its hair uh, on the back as they get older uh, and this uh, coloration is the reason why older males are called uh, silverbacks. Okay guys, and I will leave you with this fun fact. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please uh, consider to subscribe to my channel. This would mean a world to me and will help my little channel to grow. So click that subscribe button down below. Uh, also, if you enjoyed the, uh, this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, comment down below if you enjoyed the video, if you have anything you would like to share with me, if you have any tips or suggestions on our future videos, they are all super welcome. I try to respond to all of the comments, so your comment for sure won't be unnoticed. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Thank you.